Hey guys, just putting out a quick video about the Raspberry Pi 4 that was released, or I guess the information that was released earlier on today, and the product is now available for purchase. Uh, I'm gonna let you guys know, I've already gone ahead and ordered a couple of them. Uh, there's a few different styles or different packages you can purchase, and I've ordered two different ones. So I'll talk more about that in just a minute, but uh, what I'm gonna do in the video is just kinda do a quick overview. I don't have one physically with me, so I'm just gonna kinda talk about the changes that they've made for the Raspberry Pi 4 over the Raspberry Pi uh, 3B Plus. So we're just gonna go ahead and check it out and see what they've done. So right away we can take a look at the picture that they're displaying and in terms of form factor, it looks pretty much the same. Uh, there are obviously some minor changes in terms of position of different chips and things like that, as well as we can see right away here, uh, you've got the blue liner that's running inside of this USB port, which would indicate that it's a USB 3.0. Uh, and then as well as that, we've got different ports down over here. So let's go ahead and click on find out more and see exactly what they've got for us here. So let's scroll down and it says completely upgraded, re-engineered, faster, more powerful. And it starts from $35. And when it says it starts from $35, that is true. Uh, that's going to get you your entry level uh, package here. So you can see here, it's got your choice of RAM. So you've got one gig, two gig and four gig. Obviously, $35 is gonna be what's buying you your one gig, uh, and then price is going to increase as you're going into the higher gig packages. It's got a new, more powerful processor. Uh, this is absolutely true. I believe it's now running a 1.5 gigahertz processor versus the 1.4 on the previous versions. Uh, you can also see here, it no longer has the micro USB port for power supply. It's gonna be running off of USB-C. And then over here, we don't have an HDMI out. Now we have two micro HDMI ports, which support Port two 4K displays, which is actually really cool. Uh, so I'm looking forward to playing around with that and seeing what we can do with it. So that is really awesome. As I mentioned before, uh, you could see in there that it had the blue liner, which would indicate that it is a USB 3.0. So we have two USB 3.0s and two USB 2.0s that are gonna be built into it. And of course we've got our gigabit ethernet port as well. One thing that's really nice here is that they've kept the same form factor and the GPIO pinouts are all gonna be the same. So they're gonna be compatible with any of the um, accessories that you may have purchased or anything along those lines uh, for any previous version. Let's go ahead and keep taking a look. So yeah, as it says, it's got dual display 4K output. Uh, that's really cool, that's nice and an awesome feature. So if you're gonna be using this as a media center, if you're gonna be using this as a mini computer, you can actually set up two different screens and that'll be really handy. Now I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the specs as well, just really quickly, and then that's pretty much it for this video, but uh, let's take a peek to see what we've got. So in terms of our processor, we're gonna be getting a Broadcom BCM2711 quad-core Cortex-A72 ARM V8 64-bit processor that runs at 1.5 gigahertz. So that's gonna be up from the 1.4 gigahertz on the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. In terms of our RAM, we're either running one, two, or four LPDDR4 2400 SD RAM, uh, which is fairly reasonable. It's not super high end, but it's definitely for a Raspberry Pi. This is this is quite good. And then in terms of our uh, wireless and Bluetooth, you've got 2.4 gigahertz and 5.0 wireless Bluetooth 5.0, which I'd previously mentioned as well. We've got gigabit Ethernet, and then we've got two USB 3.0 ports two USB 2.0 ports, uh, and then the Raspberry Pi standard 40 pin GPIO header, fully backwards compatible with previous boards. So and as I said, any uh, hardware you'd purchased previously should work with this new board. So we've got two micro HDMI ports, which can display up to 4K if you want it to. As with previous boards, we've got a two lane MIPI DSI display port, and we've got a two lane MIPI CSI camera port. Uh, we've got four pole stereo audio and composite video ports, which is on almost every single Raspberry Pi except for the Pi Zeros. And then we've got our display ports over here, which will just tell you what it can run out. So you're looking at 4K, uh, 1080p 60 frames, and 1080p 30 frames. OpenGL ES 3.0 graphics, micro SD slot for loading operating systems, data storage, things like that. Five volt DC via USB-C connector, uh, which needs to be a minimum three amps, so keep that in mind. And then we've also got five volt DC via GPIO headers, which again, minimum three amp. 
Power over ethernet is enabled and we've got an operating temperature of zero to 50 degrees Celsius ambient. And then underneath here, it just says a good quality 2.5 amp power supply can be used if downstream USB peripherals consume less than 500 milliamps in total. So you have to keep that in mind if you have a bunch of peripherals that are using uh, less amperage, then you should be fine that way with a 2.5 amp. I, if you're gonna be buying one, just pick up an extra uh, a, a three amp power supply that runs off of the USB-C. It'll just make things easier and you're not gonna be limited by what you previously used in terms of hardware. But uh, that's pretty much it. I've gotta say I'm pretty excited about this. And I'm looking forward to getting my hands on it. Uh, I know that obviously this channel is more focused on retro gaming, so I'm excited to see what we can do in terms of pushing this thing to its limits. Are we going to be able to get better N64 playability? Are we going to get better Dreamcast playability? Are we going to be able to look at some other consoles that haven't really been running on Raspberry Pis and see how well they actually can uh, run on this thing since we've got slightly better processing power and we've got some more RAM to play with so definitely something to keep an eye out make sure you guys follow the channel because I will be doing some videos on this as soon as I can get my hands on it and see what we can do uh, with it so that's pretty much it thank you guys so very much for checking out the channel give uh, the video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and I'll talk to you guys again real soon